Part of the nation's consciousness when she was the sporty one in the Spice Girls. She's since sold three million solo albums, had a daughter, and two number ones, one of which was I Turn To You. I turn to you like a flower leading toward the sun. I turn to you because you're the only one who can turn me around. And the second track there, Why is her favourite? And now Melanie is about to make her professional debut in musical theatre. She's to play Mrs Johnston in Willie Russell's Blood Brothers. Melanie, why do you want to act and sing? Well, from a very young age, I always wanted to perform. And I started dance classes really young, like lots of young girls do. And when I left school, I went to performing arts college. So I studied musical theatre for three years. Then when I left college... It was really my dream to be a recording artist and I'm just so incredibly lucky. I auditioned for a girl band which went on to become the Spice Girls and I think people, most people, know, you know, that part of my life. It was pretty big, wasn't it? It was pretty big and it's, yeah, it's always quite nice when you meet people though and they go, oh, Spice Girls, no, no, sorry, I don't know. But there's not many people you meet that haven't at least heard of the Spice Girls. So how confident are you now of your acting because you've just been singing for quite a long time absolutely for me i think this is going to be the biggest challenge in my professional life i say the biggest challenge in my life is having a baby and um, which i think all mums can identify with but i feel quite brave after becoming a mum and i feel that it's time to stop running away from things i'm frightened of and just face it head on and I believe I have the ability, but I've been working very hard and I'm in great hands. It's a wonderful company. Now, you're from Liverpool. How important in drawing you to Willie Russell's work was the fact that that's your background? Yeah, I, I think that is really what drew me to the show initially, apart from it being a fantastic show. The dialogue, the rhythms in the dialogue are very natural to me. And I love Willie Russell's work. He's absolutely hilarious you know the characters are wonderful they're very strong likeable funny characters and musically as well his background is rock and folk so their songs are really meaty you know you can really get your teeth into them so for me it's it's really a dream role mrs johnston is a mother of, of adult sons you are a mother of an eight month old and you're only 35 yes. how are you going to cope with the Aging process. Well, this is something I've been quite concerned about because obviously I have very little experience in acting. I've been working with a wonderful director and it is, you know, it's going to be a challenge. The writing is so great and, you know, the show moves at such a pace that emotionally, you know, you feel those changes and as the show goes on, you know, she becomes quite heavy with, with the emotions that are involved. And, you know, we have a wonderful wardrobe with costumes and everything. Hopefully they'll give me a helping hand in making it realistic. Make you a bit chunkier. <laughs> <laughs> Big, heavy coat, Mrs J wears, yeah. Now, I mentioned your, your daughter, Scarlett, eight months old. You're going to be out six nights a week. It's true. I really, I didn't know what I'd want to do. Once I'd had my baby, I thought... I'll just see how it goes. No pressure. I'm such, you know, I'm in such a lucky position to be able to do that. 
Um, but when Scarlett was six months old, I thought, OK, I'm ready to start thinking about work. But this show came up really out of the blue. It all happened so quickly. And it is quite daunting to think I'm, I'm going to be out. But the great You're not thing... going to be there for bath time or I reading know. story? Sorry, I don't mean to make you feel bad. I know, I know. This was the, the big thing that, you know, making my decision was I will not put her to bed or I'll only put her to bed one night a week until she's one. You know, and at the time she was only so tiny. Um, but the wonderful thing is, unlike so many working mums, I'm going to be home most of the day, most days a week, you know. So I'm going to have some great quality time with her and her dad is great and they've got a fantastic relationship. She's a real daddy's girl, so I know she's in good hands. The Spice Girls, I mean, we've said, were absolutely massive, but there were there were all sorts of stories at the time of, of pressures really taking a toll mm. on your health. Mm. What did actually happen? Well, I think for all of us, it was such an extraordinary thing that happened to us, which was wonderful, but kind of unprecedented, you know, and we did have each other to go through everything with, which I think is a great thing. But also, I think we, we dealt with the pressures in our own way. And for me, I think pressures are worse now for young women on how they look and about, you know, body image and weight issues. But even then, at the time, it was something that, you know, took hold of me and I became a victim of that. I think being photographed a lot and you seeing yourself on TV, you become very self-conscious about how you look. And, you know, unfortunately, I fell into that trap. I was over-exercising, I wasn't eating properly. And that went on for a number of years. How did you get yourself out of it? It really came to a point where I couldn't go on the way I had been you know I'd, I really wasn't eating enough and the workload was so heavy and from really under eating I came to the point where I suppose my body just said we can't do this anymore and I, I developed binge eating disorder um, which was I'm sure just my body craving you know some nutrition and along with that you know, I found that really, really disturbing and I went along to the doctor and I was then diagnosed with depression and that really was my first step to recovery from my eating disorders and with the depression that I really hadn't thought about because my head was so screwed up with the whole eating issue. Having been through all that, and I, I don't want you to answer this if you really don't want to answer it, but how much do you worry about Victoria Beckham? She is so thin. Yeah, you know, Victoria has been thin for a long time now and I've spent time with her and I've seen, you know, she does eat well. She's very healthy. She has a very strict diet, um, but she does eat. So now I, I tend to be less concerned about her. There was a time maybe when I didn't spend a lot of time with her and I thought, wow, you know, what's going on? But, you know, I've, I've worked with her recently and she is, she's a healthy woman, just very... Very disciplined, <laughs> very thin, very disciplined. The last time we spoke, you, you said you didn't think the Spice Girls would ever reform. That was when you were starting your solo career. Yes. And you did, of course, two years ago. Yes. How did it go? It was incredible. You know, it's so funny. Even up until maybe the week before I finally agreed to take part in the, the new shows, I would say, no, no, it's never going to happen. It's not going to happen. And then... You know, I just had a change of heart. I talked with the girls and, you know, we were we were being offered to do shows at Madison Square Gardens in the O2 Arena and all these fantastic places that as a solo artist, realistically, I don't think I'll have an opportunity to play these places. But as the Spice Girls, you know, we're able to play some of the greatest venues in the world. And I thought, you know what? What have I got to lose? Let's go. And I'm so glad I did it because we had so much fun. We were able to see so many great faces out there in the audience, all our fans growing up. And all of our relationships were cemented again. And we're, again, very close and very good friends. Well, Melanie C, thank you very much for being thank with you. us. And the best of luck with thank you Blood so Brothers. Much. Now, when you're 